Greetings fellow penguins, it's Danish here, we're back with Charity Humanity. I do apologise, I know I didn't do it last week, I, I was unwell unfortunately, I, I was ill. So because of that, we're going to have two stories today instead of one. And we're going to start with a story I should have covered last week. This one involving the NCAA. And it surprised me, to be honest. Uh... The NCAA normally doesn't let its teams open their seasons in early November, but Cincinnati's Mount Mount St. Joseph will do so against Hiram College on November 2nd. I apologize if I said that wrong. The reason for the exception, number 22, that would be Mount's 19-year-old Lauren Hill, who has an inoperable brain tumor and may not live through December. In fact, the season opener will likely be her last game. Demand is so high that ne nearby Xavier University has let the teams use its bigger arena, and all 10,250 seats sold out in 30 minutes. Hill, who was diagnosed a year ago with diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, I think that's how you say it, says she will appreciate everything about the game in which she'll shoot left-handed, though she's right-handed. The tumor is having a greater effect on her right side. I'm spreading awareness and also teaching people how to live in the moment because the next moment's not promised, she says. What matters is right now. College and pro players are signing number 22 jerseys and sending them to Hill for support. And the United States Basketball Rights Association already has voted to award her the Pat Summit Most Courageous Award which usually goes out at the end of the season. This is an amazing young lady who's made an impact on the world more than I will ever do, says her coach. I wish everybody could meet her. Agreed. I, I wish I could meet some. I wish I could meet her. I wish, I, I, I wish any, everyone could meet her. She has the kind of inner strength so many do not. The kind of strength you or I don't have. She will likely not live to see 2015, by the, by the looks of it. And yet, she stays upbeat. This, she has an inoperable, inoperable brain tumour that is slowly destroying her, and she stands up and kicks it in the fucking balls. Oh, I like that. I like her. My heart, do, my heart obviously does go out to her. I am saddened that it is not, it, 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 it is not operable. That does make me sad. But her, but her courage makes me happy. And she is going to go out. She's, oh, she, I, I hope she goes out with a smile. She deserves that award. She definitely deserves it. No question about that. And it makes me happy to see the organisation work in her favour, because she deserves it. She most certainly deserves it. You have my respect, Lauren. You certainly have my respect. So, yeah, like I said, two stories. I have a second story for you guys. And this is from, this is the story I, I, I would usually cover anyway, from this past week. This is incredible as all hell. Let's have a look. Uh, Jenny Quills, again, I'm not sure how to pronounce that properly, was 33 weeks pregnant when she was hit by a tow truck as she crossed the street en route to a doctor's appointment on October 15th. Roughly two weeks later, the Florida woman emerged from a coma at Bayfront Health St. Petersburg on Wednesday she began, and on Wednesday, she began having contractions. Four hours later, she gave birth to a baby girl. Quills, 36, delivered six-pound Angel Naomi Quills, or Emmy, by, by C-section. And though the baby's due date was December 1st, Quills, Quills' doctor tells the Tampa Bay Times the miracle baby is just thri is thriving and doing well. Quills now in a stable condition is improving every day, she adds. She can move her arms and legs and respond to others using her eyes. 
Quills suffered a traumatic brain injury in the accident, during which she reportedly turned at the last moment to protect her womb. It occurs the tow truck driver turned left on a yellow light. Sean Downing, 27, was likely in, in the wrong, but may simply receive a civil infraction, as there's nothing here that rises to a criminal act on his part. The police rep says... Uh, a police rep says... <clears throat> Meanwhile, busy husband Angel Quill says, out of all the negativity, finally something positive. He focused on helping his wife improve so she can finally hold her newborn. She hadn't been able to do that as of yesterday. I want Jenny to see the baby, she says. He says. Hopefully, that will snap her out of this. I need her back in my life. A GoFundMe page set up for Quills has raised more than $9,200. Bearing in mind, this story was posted October 31st. But still, that is amazing as all hell. In a coma, 33 weeks pregnant, hit by a fucking tow truck. She woke up in time to have the kid, and the kid is fine. Miracle baby indeed. Miracle. It's, it's nice to see something like this. It's nice to see casualties drop to a fucking zero. It's about time. And, and it, it just makes me happy. It makes me happy to see them both surviving. It, it, I'm glad that the mother is recovering. The kid is fine. The, the, kid, the, the kid is in good shape. It's in good health. And everything's looking up for them. This makes me happy. And I hope it makes you happy. So, that's it. That's both stories. I, again, apologise for not covering anything anything last week. But I, I was not in a good way at all. I, I really wasn't. But anyway... Thanks for watching, leave a like, leave a favourite, subscribe so you can be on part of the Penguin Army today and we will defeat the Chair Squad. And if you have a story that made you happy, let me know. I'd love to hear it, I would, I would really love to hear it from you. And if it makes me happy, and if I haven't covered it, I will put it on next, I'll put it on next week. So, until next time fellow Penguins, Danish out.